Freaking God. Here we go, first time filling it up with water. I don't want to fully fill the tank up, eh? I only want like half full, I reckon. How big's the tank? 150 litres. Yeah, that would be about almost 20 in there. Almost 20? Almost 20. Already got no room left underneath the guards. Well, let's see how fast it's coming out. <laughs> Oh yeah. How many litres do you reckon we need? 50 litres I reckon. Yeah, easy. Yeah. How many you reckon's in there? Probably, probably 20. 20 litres. Well guys, what's going on? Um, thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update on what's been happening uh, over the last couple of weeks and stuff. Well, last two months to be honest. Um, it's been a while since I've updated you on the boat situation since the boat build. Lots been happening and um, yeah, a bit later on we're going to get into a bit of a fish. The first sort of major fish on the boat so yeah i'll get into a bit of footage after this run you through how i've been finding the boat and um yeah got one major issue that we sort of got to fix and um yeah so we'll get into that first of all just want to say a big thanks to the telfords for letting me sleep in their gym the last two weeks really letting me set my swag up in the gym and uh wake up every morning and do my weights it's been fantastic it's been seven years since i've done any weight yeah been feeling fit and healthy which is good not often i've been looking after myself after the last sort of a bit over 12 months sort of health went down a little bit during this whole boat building process yeah we're back out and um trying to live healthy and here she is here big bad beast all cleaned down after yesterday went for a run just got it back in cleaned it up just to got to clean the esky out first things first trailer's been going awesome i'm still having a few issues with the suspension at this stage i've had to upgrade the springs uh with the weight once and it's still really close to bottoming out i'm not sure what you meant to do i think you meant to give it maybe 100 to 120 mil of clearance we went 85 because um, it sags a bit like when the boat's off it it's perfect when as soon as you put the boat on it sags a fair bit so yeah springs have been upgraded i don't know if i'm gonna have to upgrade them again but i'll um, be getting back to george's soon and we'll be sussing that out so far since the build finished i went from um ingham it ran way over time this build um and we had to we were cutting it really fine i had a, an appointment in, on the Gold Coast with Dometic, part of a Dometic photo shoot thing. Um, so I had to quickly get out of there. So we pretty much put it on the water and then I was out the next day early and driving it down to, from Ingham to the Gold Coast. And it was literally finished the boat on the water with George and then straight out the door the next day, straight down. Caught up with everyone at Dometic, really nice people there. And then drove it to my sister's place. Uh, so yeah, the first trip was literally 2,000 kilometers or 1,700 kilometers or whatever. Um, from Ingham to the Gold Coast, got it over to North Stradbroke Island, um, put it in the water over there, hardly done any fishing. Then I drove it from there to West Brisbane, dropped it off at my sister's place, and then spent the next five to six weeks on the computer editing 12 months of footage and putting together those, um, those videos for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And then as soon as that was finished, then it went from picking my boat back up dropping in, visiting some sponsors down there. Big thanks to Kim, Trailer Parts and Repairs. I actually drove all the way from Ingham down to the Gold Coast with no brakes. I thought I had some brakes, but it turns out there was no brakes. <laughs> so, <laughs> dropped into Kim's to see what the go was. There's two bleeder valves on the Cruise Master brake calipers. I thought you only had to do one, because uh, that's what I was told. Turns out, if you're gonna bleed the brakes, do the two valves. So. Kim had a worker give us a big hand with that and so now I have fully operational brakes. So massive thanks to Trailer Parts and Repairs. Also dropped in to see Dometic again, ran some of their gear. Um, dropped in to see Kevin from Baintech. Uh, he helped me run through a bit of that gear. Now I know what's going on with the whole battery system. It's freaking phenomenal. You can go out. I did one trip on my way back north and the battery system actually increased in battery 
and the time we were out there. So it's exactly what I wanted. So, so far, really impressed with the Bain Tech, what's going on there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Caught up with a heap of sponsors, a heap of friends and family. Hadn't seen them in 12 months. Took a couple of my family members there. Had a big barbecue, took them all for a ride. So yeah, it was good to catch up with the friends and family. Saw my nephew for the first time. Let me just jump up in here. Got to catch up with the family. Became a uh, uncle for the first time. So I got to see my, um, a little baby nephew for the first time, so that was pretty cool. Uh, it's sad leaving the family behind and then heading straight back up north. So as soon as that was done, then I headed back up north, dropped in to see some friends in Gladstone on the way back up. So seven hours from Brisbane to Gladstone, had a run. Um, unfortunately, it didn't turn into a video. It, the plan was for the first sort of overnighter. I did sleep on the boat. We went for a run off Gladstone, ended up at, um, out at the reefs and then back in at the islands and yeah all sorts of things. It was actually really good learning experience. Yeah, unfortunately the video didn't come. The boat was fully packed with camping gear, full of fuel, four blokes on board and the dog and handled it awesome. And it wasn't the best conditions to be honest. Driving around in 15 knots um, most of the afternoon and, and coming home. So I think we ended up burning 260 litres of fuel, did over 300 k's. So yeah, it was, um, was a good sort of test trip for the boat. Yeah, unfortunately it didn't turn into a film and um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in that. But then left Gladstone, ended up in Airlie Beach, which is where I currently am now, and uh, have been sleeping in the gym with the Telfords, so massive thanks to the Telfords. Awesome pleasure staying with these guys, they're a phenomenal family, so Jack's actually got a bit of a surprise coming on in the next week or so, so he's very excited. So yeah, I uh, got out with Jack and the owner of Elite Tackle, uh, Richard in town. We got out for a one day jigging while I was here. The, the week I arrived, it was actually reef close season, Spanish close season, and barrel close season and I had $200 left in my bank account so I didn't even bother putting the boat in A because I couldn't afford to fill it up and B yeah everything was close so um, yeah I didn't really want to you know take the gamble on not coming home with any fish or do any sort of content so yeah just stayed um, stayed sort of just doing a bit of land based uh, for some GTs and stuff got one golden trevally that I lost on the rocks did a lot of my fishing with Jack and then um, as soon as we got a clear day after the close seasons opened up jumped out there and got into the first sort of jigging session. So yeah, it was good. That's what I've been doing for the last sort of two months. So sorry, the videos. Just to let you guys know, uh, the boat wasn't completely free. Just to let you go, this is not a complaining video. This is letting you guys know where I'm at. Um, I put about $70,000 of my own money into it and about 12 months of working time and all that sort of stuff. So it turned into a huge challenge um, to get it all done. And I've still got content to make for sponsors, still dragging on for probably into the early next year. So yeah, massive, massive project. So yeah, and I've got $70,000 of my own money in. 35 of that was mine. Uh, and then I had to borrow about 33 of that, that money because I didn't have $70,000. Uh, so I've paid back 13,000 of that 33. So I'm down to $20,000 just left to my mum for the engine. And then I'll be free. All the money that's sort of been coming in on this build series and everything has been actually going back to the people I owe, all people that gave me extensions. So big thanks to everyone who was involved and, and gave me a little bit of leeway on paying. At the moment, it's been a real juggling act, not a complaint. It's just how, um, you know, this is just what I've got to deal with over the next couple of months is, um, yeah, I've got to pay people back as well as trying to keep enough to keep the content coming in, keep the fuel tank up. So it's, um, yeah, just to give you guys an update, I've, I've earned off my main channel about $60,000 over six years to then take on $33,000 debt and then have something that, you know, have a boat that I've, A, never owned a big boat, never sort of fished offshore on my own. So this is just massive learning curve for me and um, I'm going to be doing my best and I've, I've got to do my best. Yeah, we're finally back on the road. I'm actually going up to Ingham tomorrow, from Airlie Beach to Ingham tomorrow, visiting George, and then starting to sort of pay the people off that helped me out with um, taking some some of the sponsors up there for trips. Stephen from Goodyear, Significant Signs, Ryan and Brownie, uh, Jerry the Painter. So got many trips, many trips to go out with those boys and um, and start paying them off to say thank you for for helping this sort of dream come into a bit of reality. So yeah, heading up there tomorrow, and I'll finally be back up there creating content and then I got heaps of stuff to do with Brett, good mate Brett that I met up there. He's just an absolute legend and um, and yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing some content with him. Right, right moving on, um, just letting you know the first trip that I did with this boat, um, absolute glass out with George. I did notice that the roof had a bit of rocking backwards and forwards and I was a bit worried about it once we started getting into a rougher conditions, that short, sharp, northerly chop 
that I've had both times going out in my last two trips. You'll see a bit of that. I was very worried about the roof lasting. Thought I might be able to get, you know, 12 months, two years out of it, but it doesn't look that way. It didn't even really last 50 hours. I'll just give you guys a look at some of the damage. So this is when we went out jigging the other day. We're out from about 11 o'clock to 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, and we've got cracks down both sides of these pieces here. So one piece there, one piece there, front there. So yeah, just cracking there. We've got a little bit of cracking on the gunnel on this side, not much. Um, just a little bit of hairline cracking there. So yeah, a little bit of hairline cracking there. It's all supported underneath. So there's lots of, there's about three gussets in that sort of section that we anticipated to take a lot of the extra weight. Um, we've got the 10 mil pad on there as well, but it did crack over this side a bit bigger. So there it is there, nice crack there, um, right on the side. Uh, and then up here, let me just brighten that up. We've got cracks down both sides of these as well, and we've also got a crack down our main pillar there. So, um, so yeah, it started to get a little bit wobbly on the way back yesterday, and we took it pretty easy coming home. Yeah, I'm not sure what the go is. I rung George. I said, George, look, I'm happy just to go without the roof. Probably the roof has been fantastic. The shade, it, the shade it gives you, the ability to have your solar panel on the roof, the sound bar, the lights, like the lights I got, only got to test out once um, when we were camped just off Gladstone there. Phenomenal. So lights from Sam Allen. I wish I had got some footage knowing that this roof wasn't going to last too long. So I rung George the other day. I rung Sam Allen. I rang everyone just to see where their thoughts are and what's going on. I'm happy to sort of go without the roof because we've got a 300 on the back. Don't know if you saw that, but yeah, we've got a Got a 300 Pro XS on the back. Unfortunately, I've got to drive to the roof, not the conditions. So like I've been taking it extra easy. And when you're down in that sort of laboring on the motor, you're sucking a lot of juice. So, and then when you get up on top, obviously the roof shakes the locks and that's when it starts to, starts to crack. But that's how the boat wants to be driven, wants to be driven fast up on top with that 15 degree hull. So yeah, I'm not blaming George at all for the workmanship or whatever. This was sort of my design to with mine and George's design to sort of come up with something that was, people hadn't seen before on a boat is the stuff coming off the gunnels make it look sort of futuristic grab people's attention that the whole design of this roof was to try and make it practical but maybe there's just too much weight up there and just not enough ways to support it uh, you know so far apart so no forward and backwards movement but definitely a little bit of side to side especially when you start going a bit faster and it's that short sharp chop it just gets that real bad vibration to it so uh, it was a crazy design that we came up with and we did our best but yeah George is going to give it a give it a go and try and fix it and we'll get it back on the boat but it's a lot of rewiring it's sanding it's painting and then back on so it's, it's going to be a big job so you might see this boat with Without a roof over the next sort of couple of um, couple of videos um, I think I'm actually going to enjoy it without a roof I do enjoy the shade it's been absolutely fantastic having it at the end of the day if I have to drive you know I don't, don't want to have something go wrong 100 kilometers offshore or going down the highway or whatnot so I'm going to strap it up before I leave tomorrow got a five-hour trip from early to Ingham to catch up with George It'll be the first time I've seen him since we finished the boat um, yeah, gonna cut all the wires up the top and take it off. Luckily, it is bolt on, bolt off, so we'll do that. And then I'll get back into my fishing, um, and if he wants to fix it, he can try and fix it. If not, might be the last time you see the roof, which is a massive shame. So, also hard to fix things at the moment with nothing in my bank account. So, everything's going towards filling the fuel tank or paying people back. We're just walking a very fine line at the moment, and it will be that way for the next couple of months, so I'll be doing my best. Um, but once that's finished, then Man, I'm, yeah, I really hope these adventures start taking off because yesterday when we went out jigging, it was absolutely phenomenal. We didn't get like big, big rain cloud come through in the morning. Um, we ended up cancelling and then, and then I went fishing somewhere else um, with Jack got bogged on the beach. Um, and then we got, got off, came back. We were awake from like 3.30 in the morning all the way through till nine o'clock at night when we pulled back up at the driveway. We ended up coming back from the fishing trip jumping straight in the boat and we ended up going out 11 and did from 11 o'clock all the way through till um, yeah 8 30 at night so phenomenal day out jigging absolutely loved it and i cannot wait to get out there and just just be on the water more i've got so much to learn just read it reading weather reports tides offshore making sure i don't do anything stupid anchoring the boat there's so much to learn in a short period of time and that's obviously what i'm going to be 
pushing across in my videos is this whole thing is just a learning experience and that's what I'm going to be trying to I'm going to teach you guys. It's been the same ever since I started this channel is teach you guys as I learn. I'm constantly giving myself new challenges in life and trying to overcome them. So that's, that's always been the aim of the channel and it's going to be no different. It just can get very stressful at times and it looks like we're living the dream. But, you know, when you're sleeping in your car or in people's gyms, I mean, the gym's been fantastic. But, yeah, just sometimes can get a bit much but yeah we're going to be doing our best and um yeah i can't wait to sort of get back out on the water and and start actually using the boat so anyway stay tuned guys uh that's just that's everything for the last two months all summed up as fast as i could sort of sum it up if you want to check out the first trip on the water um it's coming up right now go watch it it's gonna be sick it's, uh, there's some really cool jigging action actually it turned into an absolute pearler of a day so big thanks to Richard for bringing a big box of jigs out Elite Tackle we used all Cinetech jigs um, he also left me these of them here he left me a big pile of jigs to go use up north um, got some really good bites on them the other day lost a couple as well so big thanks to Richard for that well, I woke up this morning at 4 o'clock to go fishing there was a massive rain cell coming through so we actually cancelled it went fishing, got bogged on the beach, <laughs> got off the beach, came back, and then we're like, we should go fishing. So we've been up since 3.30 this morning and we're only just getting on the water now. So we're gonna go do some jigging and um, hope for the best. We got Jack. Richard. Rich, yeah, we got Jack. Jack's letting me sleep in his gym at the moment. And um, and we've got Richard, owner of Elite Tackle. Uh, he's, he's brought, what, 20 kilos of jigs out. Oh. So we're gonna try and lose a few. Um, if you're after some jigs, they just stopped from Rocky to Cooktown in BCF. Uh, Cinetech jigs. Richard's the man. He's oh, on. Wow, here we go. How does it feel, Richard? Good, mate. It feels good. Right, eh? Um, Alright, you just keep going. I'm going to start setting this shit up here. There's a bit of swell around. Yeah, well, I can see this. That's what I'm getting, is it? I've ordered it. Should be on its way. Uh, I normally just put the cursor on it, and then I just hit. Um, oh, I go down. I go yeah, yeah, new right. waypoint. It looks like we've got the exact same one. <laughs> We're that good, Richard. Or oh, did you say different line? Oh, <laughs> sorry, man. Let's fish down there. Look at that. We're on. I'm like Donkey Kong. If it could just hit the bottom. Oh, yes. Did he? Yep. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh. Oh, you dog. See, you see where you pull the fish out of? Oh, right in the middle of the... Oh, in the middle of it. Yep. Oh, on the oh, way out. Wow. Yeah. Probably just a little trevally. Oh. What is... Oh, <laughs> Oh, what is it? Spaniardo. Oh, you... No, nah, it's still... still small head shakes on it. It's growing inside. Might be a tuna. Yeah, fish is on the way out. Oh. Look at that guy. Oh. Can you see it? Oh, you dog! Oh, there's a shark on it. Yeah. Oh, there's a shark below. Mate, come up. You're gonna get eaten. Oh, little Mac. Look at the shark just there. Are we gonna get anything up past him? <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, it's not it's not small. I was gonna jump in. Hang on. Ah! You, you want to see that? You want to get some footage of that shot? Look, look to your right. Look to your right. Look at, look at that. What is it? Is it? Wow. He's gone. Such a good fish. Man. Look at the shark on his screen. The sound of it. Look at that. Again, do you reckon that was a shark? Look at the screen, holy... Yeah. Like sharks or is it lit up a fish? Oh, fish, fish and bait. Like crazy. Yeah. Like crazy. Black one's been getting get quite a few hits. Black yeah, and black and gold. Yeah. Holy shit. Right yeah. Yes. Finally. Come on, Jackie boy. Oh. Was that pulled hooks or are you still bitten off? There you go, that's what we're fishing. So it's been a minute. We came out in some average conditions. This is probably going to be the first and last trip with the T-top um, because I've hardly had the boat out. I know everyone's been waiting for videos, but uh, weather, reef close season, travel, visiting sponsors, taking family for rides. It's just this is like the first one to come back into it and uh the uh, engine's on 48 there you go 48 hours a lot of that not fishing time and uh yeah we've got about 10 different cracks in the t-top so this will probably be the last time i really like the t-top but unfortunately our design probably wasn't the best and um yeah it looks like she's gonna go so got a couple of tough phone calls to make when i get back to some sponsors and to george and see what the go is but yeah we've been out here all morning i've lost a really good fish and then just lost another one to a shark so we're gonna re-rig and keep going we're out here till late i'm gonna keep going and try and put some fish in the esky look at the sounder there's some awesome fish lit up we've been driving around all morning we've put about 50 new marks into the sounder just going off one of Richards and then um, yeah just doing some some new exploring around different spots and hopefully we can I can't believe the boys haven't hooked up the sound has been lit anyway I'm gonna put a new line on that's uh that's what happened with my last one looks like it's all um, razzed up from the shark so I thought I was getting him back maybe just ahead yeah what do we got there he is big boy really big boy I don't know. Oh, you can see him. Look at that on the GoPro. He's massive. <laughs> so here it is. This is what we're using. I just got um, 80 pound leader on there. And we've got decoy extra strong, 120 pound. So you'll need one of them. And then the swivels I like to use. I, I do all my shopping when I get to early. At Richard's shop. And there it is, NT swivels, rated to 96 kilos, size three. So we'll tie one of them on. Oh, just lost 30 of them. Open the wrong end. What color are you gonna choose? No black and gold. Look at the, look at the size here, right? Holy up. moly. Look at him, that's big. Is that a bully? Yeah, it looks like a bully to me. 
That's huge. Yeah, look how fat's his head. Oh, look at this. What's that? Is that a big tiger? No way. Is I saw, it? I think I saw stripes. Here, go like this. Do this. Maybe some stripes. I think it's a monster tiger. Really? Hey, Timmy, he's very oh, cool. Timmy. No way. This thing comes in. Freaking God. That's not the same fish. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the same fish. That's such a good fish too. If I lose this fish, it's because of you, Jack. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, Me dead. Yeah. Do you reckon he were sharks? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I couldn't move him. Yeah, you feel you. You feel that? This I'll yeah, drive. Yeah, pull. Oh yeah, yeah. It's in, it's insane. Yeah, you're gonna cut my hand. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And that first thing wasn't a shark. No. no. And I when I did it, I did it up a quarter turn. Insane. Isn't it? That's a shark. I just want to see what they are. Give me a head back at least, eh? What a f good day. Look at it. Did you picture this this morning, no, Richard? No, no, no. Neither did I. I thought we'd be fighting the conditions all day. Instead, great conditions, fighting sharks. <laughs> no, good fish to men sharks. Yeah. Let's get high you where it looks like good fish. You're on. Come on, Richard. That's a good sign. Just hit the bottom. Oh, me too. Yeah? Yeah. Is that a good fish, is it? Oh, he's getting railed. That's insane. Well, what do you got, Richard? Oh, my God. That fish. Look at Jack. Jack's getting absolutely smoked. Turn, turn this thing around. Oh, oh no, I think I'm on. Uh, oh, you're on? Did he get chewed up or did yeah, he? Yeah, there's a little bit. No, no, no. Huh? Look at this skin. 
feel his skin. Just put your finger on it. Oh, what's going on with that? I don't know. I'm on this page, right? Oh no. Oh, what? Oh, oh my freaking goodness. Can you? Oh, Look at the shark. Oh, Lee. We want a fuck lot of nanny here. Oh, what did I get? Big what do you got? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, okay. Found the mother load. Found the mother load, boys. <laughs> fuck yeah. Come on. You want a big nanny? You reckon? Fuck yeah. Nah. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. What have you got? Look at the show. Oh wow. Oh, it's red. It's a Chinaman. Oh, yeah, it Far out. That's what I got. Betcha. Nice work, Jack. Oh, you bastard. You bastard. You, you dog. That's the dog. Sharks don't touch these things. <laughs> nice work, Jack. That's a good photo. Beautiful fish. Is it colour yet? Yeah, there it is. China? And Big Nanny. Don't know. Yeah, China. Is it? Yeah. Ah, you dog. <laughs> oh. Oh, let's get <laughs> Which way do you want me to go? Yeah. Bring it over here. I gotcha. You gotta feed that line around and around this. There we go. Thing. There you go. Done. Well done, that was easy. Oh. Where there's Chinas, there's reds. We get the photo together, Timmy. Yeah, for sure. Where there's Chinas, there's reds. We're gonna have to kneel down. Let me just get a photo on my phone. The sun could be a bit better. It's perfectly in the wrong position. There we go. First decent fish on the boat today. See if we can get him back, eh? Hey? Not sure. You still missing and sea jigging it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've done alright. Oh, you are definitely winning. Oh. Yeah, no shit, but no, don't no. say that on camera. No competition. <laughs> There's no way you get no nanny and then no more. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That it's first show was crazy good. Yeah. Starting to get better and better now. I'd like to get a little more. Oh, that's good. That's better. Kind of east. He's on. Oh my god. That felt
Fell off. Okay, you'll like that one. Working? Yep, I'm not gonna say what it is. Oh, what is that? Oh, look at Holy that. Holy moly! Beautiful, beautiful big nanny. Oh, yeah, the nanny! Holy! Oh, that's, that's a dead. cracker! Oh. Nice! That's beautiful! Oh, yeah! Yes! <laughs> That's a beauty! Oh my oh, goodness! Oh. We, we, we backed ourselves, didn't we? Yes! We're like, yes, there's got to be good fish here! <laughs> we got it! <laughs> oh. Yep! My first nanny on a jig! Wow! What sort of jig's that, Timbo? <laughs> no, it's a Sub-Zero Cinetech. Wow, Available at all BCFs or EliteTackle.com.au <laughs> There you go. What a cracking what fish. A... Beautiful. Oh, yeah. And let's just say that not a drag, not a click of drag was taken. No. So oh, no. what um and, whatever and, has, has been taken out jigs yeah. earlier today yeah. is ridiculous. And I think you could do that on one breath of air too. I don't think you can really <laughs> <No. laughs> it up. Holy moly. Get some photos with him. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> Nice. There we go. Yeah, great. Back ourselves. Oh, oh no. Fish. Oh no. What's happened? The camera wasn't on. Oh, you're the joking. The whole time. That one was. No oh, way. Oh no. No. You... We missed it on this camera. Oh, you're. Kidding. Sorry, guys. I'm still used getting used to being back on the water. It's been 12 months. Woo! 80 centimeters. Is that a good nanny? That's a horse. 80 to 82, depending on, we'd never measured the gap of that, so we don't know. Really you, you wouldn't want too much bigger, nah. eating wise, yeah. as good as it gets. Righto. Let's um, Perfect, neck him. Hey. Is your bag in here? Yeah, it doesn't. You're all good to chuck him in here. No, we'll put him straight in the esky, eh? You reckon? Yeah. Oh, you'll have yeah. to bleed him out here. No, can't bleed it in the ice? Well, you can. You can. I mean, really, oh. like, I know what you're saying, but it's in the day, you know Yeah, mate, it's well done. Look at him, he just turned bright orange. That's insane. That is actually my first nanny on a, on a proper jig. So it's your first nanny? Pretty much. <laughs> what a great experience, mate. That's sick. Well, we worked all day for it. Well, well, you didn't get into nearly one. Oh. We did it, Richard. We did it, mate. We did it. And you know what? There's quite a few more fish there, right? Right, so we're coming to the end of the day. Been a good day, but not many fish put in the esky, to be honest. <laughs> Got a little bit of a storm cloud out there. Got pretty much a good run back by the look of it. And we've just been driving around, having a look, seeing if we can find some new marks. Just dropping on little bits like that. What was it, Richard? Big shows equals sharks. Big shows equals sharks. Little shows equals maybe not sharks, and maybe not having been hit with jigs. So, it'll be good. There you go. So just finding little marks like that. That's eight times zoom. So they're in the fur. They're up to about five meters in the column. That top one. And this is it in just 58 meters of water there. Just come around here. Driving back on our track. And we'll drop down and probably have last couple of jigs and 
start making our way back to see what we can do about this roof. Current slowed right down, so that may be why it's gone a bit quiet in the last yeah. hour or so. But it means we can sit pretty much on the mark for a while, just see if we can get something to bite. That's a good fish. Oh, I just got nailed too. That's a good fish. There we go. Yours good? Yours good? Oh, was good. <laughs> If it's a nanny, it's in the esky, it's good enough. Triples. Triples. Oh. There you go. That's mine or yours. Are they house together? Yeah, they are. <laughs> what have we got? What have we got? Oh, oh doubles. doubles. No way. Oh, that's cool. Tomato cod and, a, and one of them... Um, Red emperor trout, red emperor cod. Oh. Oh, we know Alright, that marks the end of the day. Big thanks to Jack, Richard. Peace out. George, what are we doing? Um, we don't really know exactly. Oh, well, I do, but I'm sort of keeping it to myself. <laughs> Alright. All we need to do, we're gonna we're gonna chop off the top of the a uh, little grab rail on the console. We're going to 10 mil plate that. That's going to get welded to the top of the console. That's going to be a pad for us to drill and tap into. And then we're going to make a couple of nice pillars to come from here to the roof. We're going to tie it back in with a little partial shelf. And we're going to tie it in here with a little tiny screen. And that will eliminate any of that sideways movement. And the roof will be bulletproof. Look, at the end of the day, it's a good thing that has happened. Um, we, need to, we need to see where we need to release some stress and it's not that bad. You know, the little cracks that have appeared, you know, probably obviously we've sanded back too much material, but all in all, it's fared up pretty good um, for the size of the roof. So like it's 2,200 long, oh, 2,200 wide and it's 1,800 plus long. Mm. It was nearly that whole full sheet. Yeah. Um, I don't know, the estimated weight on that roof alone would be, see, it's gotta be 150 kilos. I thought, yeah, between 100 and 120, I would yeah. say. Yeah, so, she's heavy. Yeah. But anyway, all, all in all, it's fared up pretty good. It's held up pretty good on the gunnels. You know, we strengthen it underneath. There's only some minor cracking on the gunnels, but it comes down to some, there was some movement there and just a little bit too much material taken away. But we'll fix that. Um, and, and I'm confident, yeah, this centre section is going to tie everything in.